To understand assembly language, why don't we design our own simple programmable machine and even create an assembly language for it? Let's design a straightforward machine that can be programmed to display text. For display, we can use a TTY console. According to its specifications, it is a sequential device that reads 7-bit ASCII values from its data input at the rising edge of the clock and displays the corresponding characters. To then display a complete text, the characters need to be provided one by one to the TTY at each clock cycle. If we know what text to display, then we can store all the characters in a ROM and fetch them one by one by changing its address input value. This ROM uses hexadecimal values. By storing characters sequentially, the address now needs to increment by only one. We can then automate this increment using an up counter. With this, our machine is ready. The counter outputs an address to the ROM. The ROM outputs data to the TTY. The TTY displays the character. The counter auto increments and this cycle repeats until the full text is displayed. We can call the counter a program counter. The content of the ROM of program. Each 7-bit data in the ROM is then an instruction for the TTY to display a character. What if we want to display a text and also signal when the character is a space? A simple signal can be given through an LED. So we add an LED to our machine. It will need a single bit signal so we increase the size of instructions in the ROM, connect the bit to LED. We then set it to 1 in the space instruction. We immediately encounter a timing problem since the TTY, being a sequential device, will only load the space character at the next rising edge of the clock. However, the LED will turn on immediately. To synchronize the LED sequentially, we only need to add a single bit register which should fix the timing issue. Let's add one more widely used feature in CPUs to our machine. A jump instruction that allows us to start executing from any instruction in the ROM other than the next one. Since program counter selects the instruction in ROM, a jump can be performed by loading the jump address in the counter. Then we need a total of 8 signals, 1 for load, 7 bits for the address. But we can reuse the character bits for the address signal by disabling TTY during a jump. So we add only 1 bit to the instructions, which when set to 1, loads the program counter, disabling the TTY write operation. Now we can program it to loop the program from a certain point after the initial flow by turning load bit 1 and setting address in the remaining bits. As you see, the programming part here is to change the stored instructions of the ROM. The instructions are of a size of 9 bits with 3 fields. The bit 8 decides whether to jump or write character to the TTY console. The bit 7 decides the LED state while the remaining bits are either character data or an address. Writing programs in machine code becomes tedious, but since we already know the instruction structure of a custom-built machine, why don't we use easier to read mnemonics than use a program to translate the symbols into the machine codes? We can use these substitutions. Then the program can be written in symbols which is easier to program and understand. We then create a simple translator. It opens the file, reads the text line by line, reads the line string by string, sets the bits. Since our ROM stores hexadecimal values, we need an additional conversion step. We write our symbolic program and give it to the translator, and we receive corresponding machine instruction. We load these into the ROM and start program execution. This kind of language, which is still close to machine code but uses easier to read mnemonics, is called assembly language, and the program that translates it into machine code is called an assembler.